APT attacks have become one of the most complicated and intractable threats over the past few decades. APT groups pose a huge challenge to government entities and large corporations, as experienced threat actors explore new and more sophisticated techniques. That is why Kaspersky researchers monitor APT groups and how they refresh and update their tool sets. In the second quarter, Kaspersky researchers continued tracking cyber activities by APT groups speaking several languages, including Russian, Chinese, and Korean. Let's see how the APT landscape changed in the second quarter of 2021. Ariel Jungheit, Kostin Ryu, and David M. from the Kaspersky Global Research and Analysis team are here with me today to share the latest findings of the APT activities in the second quarter. When tracking the evolution of APTs, we have seen actors developing new, advanced, and more sophisticated techniques. So could you tell us which new features do APT groups use in their updated tool sets? APT threat actors typically refresh and update the tool set on an ongoing basis. In Q2, we saw that this includes not only the inclusion of new platforms, but also the use of additional languages as seen by wild pressure macOS-supported malware. We have been tracking this threat actor for two years. This spring, we found a newer version of its C++ Trojan, a corresponding VBScript variant, and a completely new set of models, including an orchestrator and three plugins. This confirms our previous assumption that more payloads exist beside the C++ one. Another language used by this threat actor is Python. But perhaps the most interesting of our findings is that this malware was developed for both Windows and macOS operating systems. Decoding style, overall design, and C2 communication protocol is quite recognizable across all programming languages used by wild pressure. In the second quarter, we witnessed APT groups uh, continuing to exploit zero days when performing their attacks. A case in point is PuzzleMaker, which used a chain of zero day exploits of Google Chrome browser and Microsoft Windows. What are your findings regarding this actor? On the 14th and 15th of April, our technologies detected a wave of highly targeted attacks against multiple companies. On closer analysis, it became clear that all these attacks exploited a chain of Google Chrome and Microsoft Windows zero-day exploits. We were unable to retrieve the exploit used for remote code execution in the Chrome web browser, but we were able to find and analyze an escalation of privilege exploit used to escape the sandbox and obtain system privileges. This exploit was fine-tuned to work against the latest and most prominent builds of Windows 10, and it exploits two distinct vulnerabilities in the Microsoft Windows kernel. We reported these vulnerabilities to Microsoft. Both were assigned CVE numbers, and both were patched on the 8th of June. The exploit chain attempts to install malware in the system through a dropper. The malware starts as a system service and loads the payload a remote shell style backdoor, which in turn connects to the command and control server to get commands. We weren't able to find overlaps with any known threat actor, so we named this cluster of activity Puzzle Maker. In the beginning of the year, we saw several big attacks against Exchange servers. I wonder if APT actors have continued to carry out such attacks in the past few months. Uh, have you seen more of such attacks? Maybe there have been more of them than usual. Maybe you expect to see more of them in the future. The attacks against Microsoft Exchange servers continued into the second quarter of 2021. Most interestingly, while investigating recent Microsoft Exchange vulnerabilities, we found an attacker deploying a previously unknown backdoor we called 14 High in a campaign that we dubbed XCone Active Sense Mid March. A joint investigation with our colleagues in AMR, anti malware research, revealed multiple tools and variants of 14 High configured with infrastructure that FireEye reported as being related to the UNC 2643 activity cluster. Moreover, we saw shadow pet detections coincide with 14 High variant infections, possibly hinting at a shared operator between these two malware families. 14 High abuses the popular VLC media player to execute its loader, and it's capable of performing basic vector functions. Further investigation also revealed scripts used by the threat actor to gain situational awareness post exploitation as well as previous use of their infrastructure to operate Cobra Strike Beacon. 
Although we couldn't directly attribute this activity to any known threat actor, we found older, highly similar 64-bit 14 high samples used in close proximity with ShadowPad malware, which is known for its operations involving supply chain attacks as an infection vector. Notably, we also found one C2 IP used in a 64-bit sample reportedly used in the UNC2643 activity set, associated with the Hafnium threat actor, which also used Cobra Strike, DLL side loading, and exploited the same exchange vulnerabilities. Could you share with us your biggest takeaway of the second quarter? Was there anything fundamentally different in the way APT actors carried out their attacks? Supply chain attacks are always interesting. We reported on multiple supply chain attacks this year. While some of them have been sophisticated attacks that attracted worldwide attention, we observed equally successful attacks from much less advanced but still effective groups such as Bounty Glad, Cuffing Down, and another set of activity we called SmudgeX, but we were unable to attribute. SmudgeX was a supply chain attack where a biometric software seat installer required by government employees to track attendance was trojanized and replaced on the distribution server. The installer was fairly clumsy trojanized with a PAC DLL added to the original installer and its configuration file was modified to deploy a PlugX variant. We also reported on another earlier PhantomNet coughing down supply chain incident. In kindred fashion, a VPN client installer for use in a government environment was trojanized and replaced on another government-related distribution server with files added to the installer in a somehow obvious way. And finally, BountyGlad trojanized and replaced the digital certificate management software package installer in order to download and execute a Cobalt Strike variant hidden with steganographic techniques implemented by a framework publicly available for years. None of these three incidents include the nuanced, sophisticated code implementations designed to blend in what we have seen um, from Dark Halo and Barium in the past. Yet, it's pretty clear that supply chain attacks are becoming a trend in offensive tactics, even from these lesser advanced groups. Another would be APT31, a Chinese-speaking intrusion set. This threat actor set up an ORB infrastructure. ORB stands for Operational Relay Boxes. This infrastructure, composed of several compromised SOHO routers, was used to target entities based in Europe and perhaps elsewhere. At the time of our report in May, we had seen these ORBs used to relay Cobalt Strike communications and for anonymization proxying purposes. It's likely that APT31 uses them for other implants and for other ends as well, for example for exploit or malware staging. Most of the infrastructure is made up of compromised package routers, RK1, RE1, RE2. This little-known constructor specializes in small enterprise routers and network devices. So far, we don't know which specific vulnerability was exploited by the intrusion set to compromise the routers, nor do we currently possess telemetry that would provide further visibility into this campaign. But we will, of course, continue to track these activities. What should companies do to avoid falling victim to a targeted attack? We have several recommendations for protecting yourself from APTs. Provide your SOC team with access to the latest threat intelligence. The Kaspersky Threat Intelligence Portal provides a single point of access for our threat intelligence, providing cyber attack data and insights gathered by Kaspersky over more than 20 years. For more advanced security teams, our on-premise Kaspersky Threat Attribution Engine allows customers to easily attribute malicious findings and better focus their threat hunting efforts. For endpoint level detection, investigation and timely remediation of incidents, implement a good EDR solution such as Kaspersky Endpoint Detection and Response. In addition to adopting essential endpoint protection, implement a corporate grade security solution that detects advanced threats on the network level at an early stage, such as the Kaspersky Anti-Targeted Attack Platform. As many targeted attacks start with phishing or other social engineering techniques, educate all staff about the tricks attackers used to gain a foothold in a target organization and ensure they learn practical skills 
for example, through the Kaspersky Automated Security Analysis Platform. To learn about other interesting findings of the second quarter, check out the full APT Trends report on SecureList. Also, don't forget to subscribe for our channel so you don't miss an opportunity to learn more about the latest threat research by Kaspersky experts.